real, real quick. Before you start, is the input for the broadcast still the webcam mic like it was last week? I don't know. Because <laughs> that needs some fixing. No, it is not. Not anymore? No. In other words? Or it wasn't? It is not now. It was before. Oh, okay. Now you can go. Yeah, I already have silence okay. from before. It's fine. Go ahead. All right. From Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss. And Caleb this Craig. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another week's episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I am your beloved host, Caleb Twice. I'm your hated host, Joseph Bigolier. And I'm guest host, Caleb Craig. And today we are going to be going over the best bosses in the Final Fantasy series. Is now, it we, bosses or is it bad guys? It's kind of a mixture of both, honestly, and I, I'm going to take that into consideration while I'm doing my rankings. Um, we looked at it earlier, and this is a subject we've wanted to we've wanted to touch on for a while, but obviously... We've been asked twice by two different people to we rank, have, yeah. rank the FF villains, yeah. And I think we've gotten it in questions past, but we've just been like, eh, that's, that's an episode, not a question. Yeah. Um, so it's... There are a couple of them that we have decided, like for nine Necron, we've Joe has replaced it with Kuja at the very least. I kind of put Necron slash Kuja, I'll throw them in together. Um, so I mean, it's kind of like the a lot of the games have the bad guy switch at the end, and that's a a weakness in my mind for the, uh, <laughs> for the games earlier in the series. It totally is. But um, because of that, we have used the. Yeah, you know, the figurehead bad guy as the bad guy for a couple of these nominations. So keep that in mind. Um, but I, I kind of like for my list at the very least, I did a little bit of both. I just decided like, well, Necron is the bad guy, but you know, Kuja, I'll just, I'll just group them in together because fuck it. Okay, right? why not? All right. Um, but uh, yeah, before we get to that, I mean, what's where are you at in 14? What uh, are we doing? Well, Schweiss, we are a good way through most of the dungeons and Stormblood. Yeah. Uh, on top Heaven's of that. Word, but... uh, yeah, excuse me, Heaven's Word. On top of that, we have uh, we've started some trials, and um, I don't know, Schweiss, I think I might just plow through Stormblood tomorrow. I think I might just do that, because uh, I'm in the middle of, or I'm at the end of the last, sorry, the... Um, the fourth patch out of five, but five is kind of split up into two parts. Yeah, Sopranos, season six. Season six, exactly. Yeah. And so they are shorter two parts, but they are still, like, it's still pretty long. Yeah. But I think I can plow through it tomorrow. And uh, Tomorrow on Sunday? Yeah. You I, asshole. I have all day free tomorrow, but. Oh, my God, dude. And I'm not playing no Zodiac Age right now, like most of our listeners probably are, or yourself. Uh, I want to plow through this game. I will do some some dungeons, of course, and I'll still be working on those dungeons while we're doing Stormblood. I think. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna finish those dungeons before we finish Dragon Song War. It's too close to the end. Of yeah, Dragon we Song just need War. to push through. Yeah. All right. Um, did I say I was gonna plow through Stormblood? Yeah, you did. I meant Dragon Song War. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? What level are you in the game? I am sixty-one. Are you like? Does it block you from getting XP? No, right I now? told you this the other night. I what said, the fuck? I don't have a problem. What you is going need on? To call the helpline or go on your Square Enix account. Because and figure that out. it was doing it before. It was giving me XP before, but now it has like a little no sign on the XP bar. Did it ever start with the Stormblood yes, animatic? It did, but it doesn't now. It. When did it stop? I don't. I don't fucking. Was know. Was there an update and it just decided it wasn't going to do it? I I don't know, man. It just did. It's what? Okay, you do need to actually call someone and get some help on this because this is bullshit. It is, but I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm I gonna... have had no problem. I bought the copy digitally and it just started. Mm. I'll course, look at you, it. Again. You bought it physically, though, right? Yeah, I did, but I had the okay. digital early access key that I put in. Okay. Did you... so? How would I have the early access key? Square okay. Enix if, if I didn't buy a... the fucking game, if huh? it's a physical copy, then you need to go on your Square Enix account management and then activate that on your account management thing online. But how would I have the thing? I don't get is like 
why would I have early access that's only available for like, pre-ordering the game if I didn't have the game? So okay. why give it to me for the You're early right. access period? You are right. And but, not the fucking regular period. But I know that my PC version of Heaven's Word, just because I have... Oh, excuse me. Of, of A Realm Reborn, just because I have Heaven's Word on the PS4 doesn't mean my account is allowed to play Heaven's Word on the PC. Well, right, but that's I a... would have to go in and get the physical Heaven's Word or digital Heaven's Word for PC in order to do that on PC in order for even though it's the same account. There you have to go into account management. So I would go into account management first and then make sure you activate Stormblood and not lose out on the XP that yeah. we've been gaining from these dungeons. And, oh, I definitely have been. And then uh, also then if you can't do that, then you gotta call their helpline after I, that. I think it's stacking though, because I've seen the little bar go up, but it still has the block. So I might be like level sixty three when I get it opened, or they're gonna fuck me. I'm not sure which, but uh, I'm I'm ready for. Either. I can't believe you didn't already check the account management system. I I don't know. <laughs> we only talked about it like. We've talked about it like three weeks in a row now. No. And I've been like, my copy doesn't have a problem, Schweiss, and that should be the flag to go, oh, I well, need to check Well, you weren't level 61 out. for that long, though. No, but I had the animation. I didn't have a big stop sign telling me to stop. No, I don't know. We'll figure it out, but so it doesn't really matter. We're going to get all these dungeons yeah. out of the way, and we're going to have all the XP we need, but I don't know. It's yeah. just it's just annoying. Like, why <laughs> why would I have the trial version? It's like... It, it's like being questioning whether or not I own Type Zero when I played the 15 trial that I bought Type Zero for. It's like, well, did you buy Type Zero? It's like, yes, I bought Type Zero because you remember when you made this little demo exclusive to those who buy this other game? Yeah, I have the demo, so clearly I have the other game. Uh, I I bet this was I bet this is an easy fix. It, it probably pulls, is. It pulls up the fucking magnet when you log into the game or before you log into the game. It probably is game. an easy fix, but it's just dumb that they didn't have it auto applied because I it was connected to my account and I had the Stormblood one during early yeah. access. But I think I don't know they might have wiped it or something. I don't know what the fuck they did. But or it's, maybe when it stopped being early access, you actually had to register your game. Maybe I don't know. I don't see a problem, Craig. <laughs> No, I think he had to. Didn't he had to go in and register his Heaven's Word when he did that too. So that was yeah, but I no, I bought Heaven's Word. I bought the game with Heaven's Word, and oh, I didn't you... have to register Heaven's Word. Okay, but I I, I I registered the fucking early access uh, for Stormblood, and clearly that's not enough to just <laughs> register the Stormblood as is. So fuck well, me. When I when I got Heaven's Word for PS4, I had to mess with something on the Magnet. In order to like actually use it, really, yeah. I didn't. I didn't have to do anything. We've had the Heaven's Word background the entire time we played fourteen. Well, we bought it with the combo. Yeah, with Heaven's Word four. So maybe, oh. maybe that's it. Maybe it's because I bought Stormblood like, separately. Yeah, it wouldn't let me like make the uh, like it would show the the new races that I could pick for Heaven's Word, but it wouldn't actually let me use any of them until I like registered Heaven's Word in my uh, magnet. All right, stupid. We'll do it later. Okay. So you're going to beat 14 tomorrow, though. You're going to beat Dragon Song War. Yeah, man. I got all day. I got all day. I'm going to beat that Dragon what about Song the, War. What about the rest of the days? Like, what are we going to do? Look, and what are we going to do about the legendary or the uh, extreme fights? Because a few of the listeners have said those are, like, ones that they can't even do. Like, Krinitol hasn't done a bunch of them. So, like, do you um, want to try to do those? Because those are, like, well, heavy shit. I'm not... I don't know if I want to do the stuff that's going to take like months to figure out how to do. I definitely don't want to do those. So maybe I'll go through the list with Krenital or yeah, or just anyone in that chat and just be like, yeah. okay, experts. Yeah, which tell ones? Tell us what is reasonable and which, what is not. Which ones do we have balls enough, big enough balls yeah. to actually beat? Because extreme, if we can't, if we're gonna, yeah, if it's gonna take us like. Weeks and weeks of grinding other content to get no. one of them done. That's not not gonna grind items. Either. That's late game. Not gonna pull at eleven on this. Yeah, that's late game. Like you're sticking with the game. This is your game. Yeah, that's not kind of thing. It's not what we're in here for. As much as that content, I'm sure would be fun. Yeah, it probably would um, be. It would be life consuming and all of that good stuff. But well, we got. Tactics. I mean, we originally said we were just gonna do three things, but then we decided we wanted to do all the dungeons. Maybe we just want to do all the dungeons and. Yeah, Not maybe all the trials. Maybe some of the trials. The maybe maybe some of the good trials. Um, I don't know. I'll I'll talk with someone about it. We do have our five page list though, and uh, we are actually a good chunk into those. Yeah. As far as the uh, the the dungeons and the trials are concerned, 
Um, not so much the 24 man raids, which is about one and a half of those pages of five. <laughs> yeah. Pages. So, uh, uh, guys, you should join us. We're, we want to do some of those 24 man. And I guess raids. we need at least eight people for the Bahamut. It. Yeah. Yeah. We want to do that too. Um, so just I don't we, know. Do you want to try to? We only had six people the other night that were up for it, but yeah. Do you I wanna... know we have eight people. Just matters on scheduling. Right. Do you want to try to do that this week? Then try to see if we can get some of those. I taken would care like of. to. Yeah. All but right. I mean, it depends on everybody else's schedule. Me and you can't just do them. Well, yeah, obviously. So, um, so yeah, guys, meet up with us. We want to do some of these dungeons if you guys are available. Um, we've got the Discord. We've got. We've got the, uh, well, just the Discord, basically. You should just get a hold of everybody. So, Yep, at Crenital on Twitter. Yeah, or you tweet them. Or you can talk, contact one of us, uh, which, by the way, um, we'll do plugs after we figure out what you guys have been doing in your Final Fantasy games. Craig, our dear, our dear beloved guest, yeah. what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Uh, just playing some Zodiac Age. <laughs> just some Zodiac Age. Yep. All right. Yeah, it's uh, been going pretty well. The uh, I like the new job class system that they have going on. Um, it basically, it revamps all the license boards, so you have a smaller section, uh, and it like kind of makes it into the shape of like whatever zodiac you happen to pick. So it's kind of weird that way. <laughs> um, but like each job can also combo pretty well with like another one why the fuck are you laughing <laughs> your little noise you <laughs> made was great okay <laughs> all right sorry craig <laughs> i'm so sorry that we are such fucking assholes to you i really am but you did kind of make a little you know, sound in the <laughs> middle of your sentence well, and then me and schweiss looked at each other for a second and then you just can't help you just can't help it but kind of giggle I have a sore throat, man. Stuff mm. is going to happen. Is that what you have? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys fucking do the shit that you make fun of me for way more than I fucking do. What, Dad? You do it to the point <laughs> where it's That's like natural for you guys to do dare. it rather than for when I do it for fun. I remember about two years ago, I hadn't seen my parents in like a few months. And I'd been hanging out. Of course, I'd been living with you. And... They were like, you talk different now. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, you're talking all like, (laughs) 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 like in the back of your throat. I'm like, oh, shit. So now I just talk that way. So thank you, Craig. You're welcome. I'm pretty sure, like, maybe we can look back at, like, the first five episodes. Not talking about recorded quality, but just, like, manner of speech. Yeah. I wonder if I totally have a different way of speaking now. I know I do, because I used to mockingly say stuff that was grammatically incorrect. Like, just, like, it ain't (laughs) this and that. And now I do it, like, just naturally, and I can't stop it anymore. I used to do it as, like, a joke. But now I, I will be, I will say, like, um, I don't know, these, and it's singular or something like that. Like, like a cellist? Yeah, or something. Like, it, it's, we, you fuck it up for long enough and you just can't not do it anymore. So I, I know, know what you mean. Uh, dude. I know what you're talking tell, about. Tell us about uh, the game uh, you've been playing. <laughs> I'm fucking trying to, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Craig. Anyways, so uh, the comboing of the the job classes is pretty cool i just got to the part where i can um get a second job for everybody and that like doubles the amount of license board that you can use basically so you kind of got to figure out what kind of job combinations you want for each character uh like for instance i made uh ash uh a black mage red battle mage combo so she has like a higher uh magic damage stat and also each character has like changed in their like the way their stats are allocated so like certain characters will be better for certain things like Ash and Pinello are more mage style and Bosch and Balthier are more like uh high damage combo dudes and Vaughn is like good for everything and Fran is like she should just kind of be support cuz she doesn't ha- like excel in any particular really? area yeah she excels in legs <laughs> yeah, she she gives up skill for hotness, I yeah. guess. Yeah, but she's get. That's wonder, what most people are like, though, Craig. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if she. Yeah, uh, I wonder if she ever gets like fleas in those ears of hers. Oh, you, know, you should ask her. Yeah, I'll groom it. I'll groom them for her. 
Yeah. Yeah. Pick those bugs out. Hell yeah. Whatever it takes, man. Uh, I wonder how tall she is. Like, are you enjoying Twelve? I am, dude. This time I, uh, I got one of the rare game that just like randomly popped up, killed it with a phoenix down because it's an undead thing, and it dropped like a spear that I shouldn't get until like the point I'm at now, which is like a third of the way through the game. Okay. So I've had like this beastly spear that I've just been one shotting things with from like the very beginning of the game, and it's fantastic. Yeah. It was annoying. Did you enjoy Twelve before though? I did, okay. but like the, with the with the new job class stuff, it adds a lot of replayability. Cause did you now beat I it before? Be like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, was that the Twelve review? Remember? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Obviously, but yeah, sure, you were there. I yeah. remember. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, great times. Well, I just uh, I want to like go back and like change job classes around if I play it again, and I want to like there's the zodiac spears in a different place, and since I don't have to avoid every fucking chest now, like I want to like go and see if I can get it like multiple times because apparently you can go to the the hen mines and it has like a point one percent chance of spawning in the one chest mines. in one area. Like the that chest will just have it in there, so you just gotta like zone in and out like randomly and like see if it'll pop. <laughs> Original twelve had that as well, but it was for, um, actually no, yeah, it did. For like digging it up or yeah, for grabbing yeah. it. If you fucked up and uh, didn't and opened the wrong chest, it would. That was the only way you could get it. Yeah. I was watching the stream of Twice yesterday, and there was some rare game he was trying to make pop, and then I you were trying to do some sort of cheap. We oh, call it yeah. not a cheat, a cheap, which, you know, utilizes the game's own mechanics against itself mm. as opposed to actually putting in a code that t- changes the entirety of the game. A cheap Schweiss you were trying to pull off that was not working for this version of 12? Yeah, yeah, um, it's the Dustia farming. It's where you go into the Wester Sand and in certain areas, I can't remember what the area is called, but if you're in critical status, there's like a percent chance of a basically an undead dude with like really long claws to just spawn and anything that's undead in final fantasy as we all know you can either one or two shot with the phoenix down so the trick is early game vaughn you you grab him and you go out into the western sand you farm a bunch of wolves until you get gold enough to buy i don't know like it's probably like 50 phoenix downs and you go in and you Get critical, and you find Dustia, and what you do is you throw a phoenix down on him. And in 12, in the original 12, when you flee the screen, so like when you're almost dead and you're running from a ghost, and you go into the next zone, they will zone in with you, which is bullshit if you're actually trying to get away, right? But with Dustia, um, the original game's mechanics, the hardware was limited to where you would kill it and you get XP right away, but you could leave the map before the XP and the LP show up on the map itself, and it would spawn in the next zone with you again so you can throw another phoenix down on him and go into the other zone, throw another phoenix down, and just keep doing that. <sighs> and you can get Vaughn up to level 30, and then when you get Fran and Balthier, they're one level ahead of whatever Vaughn is when you get them, so they will be level 31, and you will be level 30. But, and uh, but alas... Yeah, you can't do it. Can't you can't do it, do it in this, in this version. version. Yeah, that it, sucks. Uh, it just instantly pops everything, or at least the, the the hardware limitation is gone and it it's fixed in a way. But tisk, you still tisk. Yeah. yeah, the only way to cheap level up now is the way that you did. With I think can so. you still do that? I imagine I think you so. Can, yeah. yeah, I can't imagine because you can where still you do couldn't. the you can still get like every gambit that doesn't matter, and then you could set up the the team the way that you need it to be. Yeah, as long as that rare game still exists in that area, which he should, oh you God. can still, and then on times four speed too. Yeah, it times would be four insane. speed <laughs> only, so it only has to stay on for like half a day. Yeah, dude. It as would opposed be, to two days, it would be ridiculous. You would get so much XP and LP from that. It would just be it yeah, would be it would the not roof. be right. But uh, yeah, it's been pretty fun though. I do like the variants um, of gameplay. I like that I actually have to use um, Pinello as a mage now because I chose Black Mage, Red Battle Mage for or Time Mage. I think uh, Black Mage, Time Mage combo for so i have to you know adjust to the area that i'm in and right now i'm doing the the giza plains during the wet season i'm running through that part of the campaign so i just have her with um to attack whatever i'm targeting with uh thunder so it's usually a weakness and i don't know it's 
it's different. I mean, there there are some crazy job classes in there, and I mean, I think Bosch at level twenty has like twenty or three thousand HP or something like that, or twenty three hundred. Like, yeah, the That's good. the stat uh, yeah. bonuses that you get in the job classes are now condensed, so they're like worth more than they were before. Yeah. It's crazy. So, I? like, I literally got one for Fran that was, like, 310 HP, like, really early on. Yeah. So, like, everybody gets huge stat bonuses. And, I mean, LP, you can grind out on anything. Like, the wolves in the first area give you one LP um, each. So, if you just run around times four speed and crushing wolves for an hour, you can have hundreds of LP. Yeah, and, I got, and the drops are better now, so I totally got that double LP item super early on, and so now I can grind out things way faster. Yeah. It's amazing. I want to see you grind, boy, big boy. Oh, you can. Ah. Put it up on a stream. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been pretty fun so far. I'm enjoying just it. It has to be on um, a different site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wish I kind of grind an eye I wish I could just focus on um, one of the games that I need to finish. <laughs> but that I one. wish you could focus on some other things. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not giving you enough time. <laughs> no, but uh, it's it sucks because we have so much fourteen, and now we're in like the twilight of our fourteen playing, and this game comes out, and I'm like, oh, I only got to play ten hours of it this week. It's like nothing. I played I played way more fourteen than that. It hurts. I'm sorry. And if I'm going to have to beat 14 tomorrow somehow, then... Somehow. Are you busy tomorrow? Yeah. I mean, for a little bit. We have Game of Thrones. Are you going to be down here, or are you going to go back up? I can't be down here, dude. That that keeps me here for another day. An entire day where I can't fucking shower, and I'm just here. What are you going to do for done. Thrones, Craig? For what? Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 1. Uh, my brother has HBO, so I can watch it online. Okay, I see. <sighs> His company that he works for apparently gives, gave him a uh, free online TV. It's okay, Caleb. It's not like it's a show we watch together or anything like that. You can. Go uh, ahead I mean, and just if watch you want to pick me up, that's yeah. fine. But I, whatever. Hey, if you want to pick me up too, twice. <laughs> you know, I wonder. I wonder if. Uh, oh it's, shit. Only, it's only an hour and a half drive. Yeah, yeah, Caleb. Don't tell Dylan that you have HBO. Okay. Dylan's supposed to watch it here with me. That's like our thing, right? <laughs> it's our bro time is when Thrones comes back. That's when I see Dylan. <laughs> so don't tell him you have it or else he'll go over there because it's way close. Oh, no, he lives in Orem now, doesn't he? Yeah, he lives closer oh, to Oh, well, shit, then, yeah. Doesn't matter Fuck now. you, then. You can tell him whatever you want. <laughs> but, Did uh, you catch up on season six? Not yet. We're like halfway oh, through. Oh, dude. Yeah, we're only dude. four episodes in. Oh, fuck. I know. Tonight's going to be awesome, man. And tonight is the... Oh, so man. So this is episode five of season six, then. That's good. That's yeah. good. Five, six, seven, and eight um, tonight, at least. Who knows? And then the last two. Yeah. Okay, the last two Schwa are like Craig. 10 out of 10. Craig. No, they're actually, I don't want to oversell. They're shitty. They're so bad. It's the worst season of Game of Thrones. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah? In opposite ways. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, anyway, enough about Game of Thrones. <laughs> Let's talk about some uh, Final Fantasy again. <laughs> you mean some news? Well, it's gonna be news, uh, but my mouse is too far away from me right now. Oh, that's nice. Anyways, yes, Final Fantasy <laughs> news. 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 Kind of a kind of a low week for news. Um, in fact, one of the articles is a uh, Yoko Taro, the director of Near Automata, is talking about his favorite PS4 games, including the cursed Final Fantasy 15. So the cursed, yes, very much the cursed. I liked it. Fuck all this. It was like well, this it, fan backlash. It took forever. Screw this. So it was cursed. Final Fantasy 15, here's what he says about that. I was creating a title called Near Gestalt slash Replicant when this title was called Versus 13, but because it was very likely that our games would release around the same time, I was thinking, oh man, Versus is an action RPG, right? It would suck if the release dates were close to each other. Near ended up releasing without having to worry about for Versus 13, but then when I was creating Drakengard 3, I thought it would suck if they released close to our <laughs> release date. And it was the same again when we were creating Nier Automata this time, too. Looking back, 
I feel like I was trapped by the curse of verses for about 10 years. This game and its content created over the course of 10 years is unparalleled and unique, and I enjoyed it a lot. The one thing that surprised me the most is their incomprehensible passion towards food and beverage. <laughs> FF <laughs> is amazing, so he is a big fan. There but you go. he was just like, oh man, I hope this game doesn't fuck my game. <laughs> it's like trying to release a, a new album next to, I don't know, like Beyonce or some shit. It's like impossible. That's right. So, um, yeah, fears. Tell he, us about your Beyonce <laughs> troubles twice. Uh, well, yeah. so when I was part of, uh, when I was part of Godsmack, right? The, their last album didn't get number one. Our last album didn't get number one on the box, uh, the Billboard 200. And. And Godsmack had continuously had number ones up until Beyonce decided to release on the same exactly. time. Exactly. Okay. And then they got number three. But uh, I yeah, don't think it... But Metallica comes in. And I don't know if you guys know how big of a Metallica fan I am. But man, he just. They destroyed the pop albums that came out that week. Yeah, <laughs> they did. Including Bruno Mars got second by like a shitload. Like there was a <laughs> big gap. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, Metallica and Bruno Mars. Metallica should do. Uh, and Metallica did not have a number one hit that played on the radio for like twelve years either. He didn't have. They didn't have that. It's so hot. <laughs> they didn't have that. But I don't think that played for twelve years. It did. It, it still played. It's played <laughs> for twelve years worth of time. And on the admittedly, <laughs> I do like that song a lot. <laughs> but it's Metallica, man. Yeah, yeah it's Metallica. can't be touched. So, do you remember the uh, Final Fantasy 15 Magitek exosuit Power Ranger bullshit? Yeah. That yeah. they were supposed to have. Um, so Those poses are yeah. a little... Gay? <laughs> Thank <laughs> what? You. No. Caleb, no. Craig, Craig, I would never say such a, Dude, that's such totally a rude what... thing, Craig. That's, that's totally what you're going for. I, 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 don't judge what I would have or would not have said. <laughs> I know you, Joe. I know what you would have said. So these are <laughs> going to be launching in July with a free update from uh, yeah, Square Enix announced that the suit will make you invincible for about 30 mil- minutes and boosts <laughs> your fishing skills. <laughs> yum, yum. After use, it cannot be used uh, used again for 24 hours. So this is kind of like a limited... <laughs> what the fuck is the point, then? Well, you it's have 30 a, minutes of it's invincibility. It's a boost once a day. Yeah, it's your daily. That's what it is. It's your, your daily, daily FF15. You can be invincible for 30 minutes, and you can They're just going to make better. FF15 an MMO and just have a bunch of different Noctises running around in the world. Yeah. <laughs> or no, you you get to like make your own character. It's like GTA Online. You just make your own looking dude, and he's from 15. But on your screen, he's Noctis. Well, if you can Whatever fish better, why is. can't you cook better or like take pictures better or I, like walk around? You know, like, I was going to say, well, Noctis doesn't cook, but then I looked up and it's four suits, so I don't know why. I can't answer that. <laughs> yeah. what or the fuck, walk man? or explore better. How could we can't explore better in an exosuit? Yeah, at least walk faster. I mean, what the shit? Yeah. Yeah, you don't walk fast enough in 15. No, you don't. No. <laughs> I don't know, man. I need super it's... speed. I think you do walk fine. pretty fast at 15, especially if you got that suit on from the yeah. uh, deluxe edition. It's not, it's not yeah. fast enough for that Yeah, flat. the My Chemical Romance suit. Yeah, the My Chemical Romance suit suit, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. But yeah, I wore it the most of the game. <laughs> Actually, you know what it is? It's the Avenged Sevenfold guitarist suit from their music video from a few... Oh, shit. He's like wearing something that's really similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... It's definitely in that era. <laughs> yeah. So not much news. Um, Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, is out. It is awesome. You guys should it's buy it. It's 12. Go to Amazon.com. Click through our little link on our site to support us if you want to buy it. And uh, I think it's like a $40 game. It's a remaster, so it's, it's not too well, expensive. Well, it's 50 but if you it's buy it 50? through Amazon for the first week that it comes out or you pre-order games, they give you 20% off. So it's too late. No, first no, week. No, the first week, so it should be it came fine, out Tuesday. like, immediately right now, but not too much after the release <laughs> of this episode. Yeah, immediately right now. So, in other words, you get this episode in your feed, you better get over to Amazon <laughs> through <laughs> Ultima Final Fantasy. Of course. Com. It's a great way to support the show. Um, another way to support the show is, of course, through a Patreon link, or there's a PayPal link there as well. We are working on setting up some other stuff so you can enjoy your your audible or your website building and um you can support the show for free going through 
uh, those things. Yeah. Also, thank you, Scott Ryan, for your recent Patreon pledge. We really appreciate it, man. It goes a long ways. Same. Years, in fact. You can tweet me at Joseph Gillier. Me at Obsidian Box. <laughs> me at UFF Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I like how we did plugs right before we were going into discussion. Yeah, it's fuck it, unusual, do it whenever. Unusual order. Do uh, it whenever, that's what I say. Let us do it. Okay. You need a drink? Hello. Hey, what's up? So I'm not supposed to have alcohol or caffeine anymore. I'm going to have both. Wait. Get a peanut butter bar. Oh, uh, did you just get the blood drawn today? What? Saturday. I have I have about thirty beers that need to vacate the premises today, so You're gonna start drinking at one? Yeah, it's in the afternoon. As long as you're sober enough to take me home. Oh boy. Take him home tonight. Yeah, another. you're going to make Alex do it again? Probably. I have to get rid of these. Wow. Then why'd you buy them? Because Cameron wanted a drink last weekend, and then we went to drink, and he like fell asleep on the floor. Yeah, it's because... Yeah. We, I don't know. Every time we have plans on the weekend, we start way too fucking late every single time. It's because of Thrones. It's because Jake takes forever to fucking be able to watch Thrones with us. That's why. Well, we start partying... And then Jake can walk his ass over here. Like he did he that one been. time. Remember, he jogged and he was all like, <sighs> and That's it was true. like, wow, you jogged. Way to go, bud. He mm. came that way last time, too, I think. Oh, yeah. I guess that's fair. I don't know why you guys don't just start earlier. You don't have to start at 1130. <laughs> anyway. All right. You ready that's for this? An idea. You know. Whatever. Yeah, I'm letting you start. So, Final Fantasy is a series known for great stories, is great it? music, and really awesome bad guys, for the most part. And today, Joe I and I... I wouldn't say for the most part, for a minority of the games that sell really <laughs> well. Yeah. All right, fine, fine. I'll be honest, like, my top ten, like... Are they pretty interchangeable? Three of them are okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... So there's really just like a top six. All right, fine, <laughs> fine. There are or a seven. lot of forgettable bad guys, but... But then there are some really good ones. Yeah, there are some really good ones, and we're going to dive into that today. Craig, do you have your list of favorite bad guys from the games that you've beaten? No. Main series. <laughs> okay, come up with that as we sit here and discuss. Hold on. Hold on. Let me... How many... Which games have you beaten in the first place, Craig? It's been a while since you've been uh, on the show see. and talked about your Final Fantasy... One, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and twelve. Okay, so and rank 15. rank those guys as bad guys. <laughs> You're welcome. I just handed him a piece of paper, and uh, he's gonna get to work on that. Um, we also had a problem, like we talked about at the beginning of this episode. Um, what counted as like bad guy versus final boss? Yeah, Schweiss, antagonist. Schweiss was kind of moving towards the uh, the final boss category, and I'm kind of moving towards the antagonist kind of category. Uh, with a few exceptions, I chose to rank orphan as opposed to the Pope in thirteen. Yeah, as opposed to Bartandalus. Bartandalus, and uh, the reason was is because Bartandalus is confusing as fuck. And then wasn't really, he kind of just dropped off the face of the planet, and it was Orphan that was, like, behind the thing the whole time. So, but but then, of course, I'm ranking Kuja as opposed to Necron for, like, opposite reasons, because Necron is just random. There is no underlying thing that Necron is doing. Well, Or I, Cloud of Darkness for FF3. Necron works for the theme of the game, but... I don't think Necron works necessarily as a character himself because, like, they're always dealing with death the entire time, and he is the manifestation of death. Like, that's what his name means. Necro is dead. I don't think it works. But I think it thematically works. Uh, and that's why I have Necron on mine. Okay, well, so we're just going to deal with our own list of, of bad guys. But I, I, I did Necron slash Kuja, though, because it's they're basically... I don't think one of them makes it stronger necessarily, so... 
Okay. What do you have at the very bottom of your list? We're going from 15 to number one. What's the bottom of the barrel for you? Schweiss, I have at the very bottom the first uh, the first example in the series of a bad guy that's sort of causing chaos but then does nothing at the end. His name is Zandy from <laughs> FF3. <laughs> Zandy. And he's super forgettable. And so because I, I can remember the Emperor, I can remember uh, um, Garland from ff1 as like a character i can't Nothing. remember Zandy. <laughs> i remember i remember cloud of darkness being the stupid bad guy switch but i honestly like i know zandy is like doing shit but i, I, I if i couldn't remember him i was like wow he didn't really leave an impression on me so he's yeah. at the fucking bottom so that is zandy what do you got at the bottom uh for me the 15th best main bad guy in the series and we're just doing main series here. Yeah, main series. Uh, I, I put the Emperor from Final Fantasy 2. I I basically, I don't really remember a whole lot. I just remember FF2 really being Star Wars, and that's like when it, the series became Star Wars, was Final Fantasy 2. And I just don't remember very much going on from the Emperor. I mean, the character Sarah, to me, the one that wanted to bed me, it was awesome <laughs> in that one scene. Like that, yeah. She had more depth than the main bad guy, I felt. I'm not going to disagree with you about the depth thing, but you do fight the Emperor like three times in that game, and I remembered the fights, so I ranked the Emperor a lot higher. I don't. I don't really? remember fighting him. Yeah, I know I did fight him multiple times because I remember chasing his ass around everywhere but uh and then that hurricane thing and like yeah okay i remember it but i don't i don't remember the fights themselves <laughs> and i do remember zandy and i do remember cloud of darkness Thunder. which is my number 14 <laughs> is uh zandy slash cloud of darkness um not too memorable like joe said bad guy switch it really set the tone for that shit and i i don't know i don't really dig it in the series and it, it they've done that multiple times and it just feels i don't know it feels weird it's like it's like wizard of oz you know like you think you think it's this thing and then there's the man behind the curtain and like he's the one pulling the strings and it's like eh, you could do that once i would say you could do that once in a series of 15 but cloud but... of darkness isn't pulling the strings cloud of darkness comes there to bring balance to the force yeah <laughs> that's what cloud of darkness comes there for so cloud of darkness is not actually like a, a like a zandy's goal it's just fucking random so no one's pulling the strings as opposed to like a that's true a yeah. zemus yeah zemus from, from four. ff4 which was like oh kuja was the bad guy and then the emperor um oh shoot golbez yeah golbez. was the bad guy for a long time but then you find out that there was someone behind that um whose name is zemus slash zero miss uh who's kind of pulling the strings i do think that is better I don't think it's the greatest narrative tool ever. Uh, I do think it is better than the straight up, even if it's thematic, whatever that means. Even if, even if it's thematic, if it doesn't like come out of the story, it does. I, I don't like the bad guy switch. All right, that's fair. What do you have for your my, 14? My number 14 is the Shadow Lord from FF11. Jeez, all the way down there. Uh, yeah, and um, that is. I can't respect that. I find the storytelling in FF11 to be generally bad, except for some of the uh, expansions I thought were okay. Right. Um, in fact, I like Wings of the Goddess quite a bit. But uh, Shadow Lord was a bad guy in the past, and it's like he's Voldemort, so he's coming back, and then you just kill this guy who you never had any connection with. So I, because of his use in FF11, I'm putting Shadow Lord uh, second to last. It's not... That is terrible. And certainly, there are more interesting bad guys that come out of the expansions of Eleven. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and they're always, in some way, connected to the Shadow Lord. Uh, so maybe you could argue that the Shadow Lord is still like the great bad guy because, like, oh, this one bad guy is Professor Quirrell, and this one bad guy is whatever it is. Um, but Shadow Lord himself, I don't find that interesting. Okay. What's uh, what's next up on yours? Next up on mine is. Uh, is uh orphan i put x death right there but i'm changing my mind right now um orphan is next up on mine because uh, 13's narrative is confusing enough uh with bartandalus and then orphan suddenly turns out to be the thing that you're gonna go try to kill 
Um, I didn't find him that narratively interesting, kind of like Shadow Lord. It's just just there as a final boss to kill off. It is a cool final boss, though. Like, the actual... I think cooler than Shadow Lord's fight. So yeah. I liked it as a final boss. All right. Um, well, I put Shadow Lord in number 13, oh, okay. which is oh. the only... Oh, so you gave me shit for putting it so low, and <laughs> well, then you put it up. he belongs as the 13th best, oh, okay. not right. the 14th best. Oh? Um, <laughs> yeah, just uh, like Joe said, the storytelling in 11 leaves a lot to be desired, and you just don't have the same kind of connection. I, I feel like it's stronger than the other two, though, Mainly because you have to rely on friends, and I feel like the theme of Eleven is what makes Eleven so strong, because that's why it's such a fun game to me, is you have to work together. And that was a fuck of a fight. Like, that was tough to beat that guy. We had the party, we had everybody going, we lost a couple times, like, we we really worked our butts off to make that thing happen. So I think I think thematically, the Shadow Lord is stronger than than Cloud of Darkness and the Emperor personally but i mean even then even then it's not the most engaging of bad guys and we've seen some very well fleshed out bad guys even before final fantasy 11 and certainly some after obviously because we put this so fucking low but uh so it's it's on the tail end but still had some good things to it uh i got um what did i say orphan right i got zemus next and it's because of the mind control section, which I know a lot of people love 4, and I understand why you like 4. It's okay. Um, but there's a lot of things in 4 that I find are, like, betraying as a narrative um, as narrative tools, which is like, oh, we're going to kill off all these characters. Just kidding. Well, we're not. And then also, uh, oh, Kane is the bad guy, and then Golbez is the bad guy, and then it's Zemus. And well, who cares about Zemus? You always kind of knew Kane was, like, under... Mind control. Yeah. So but you was, thought it was Golbez. It, yeah, you, it was Golbez. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, Golbez is good now. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, and he joins your party eh. in after years. Eh. Not that big of a fan of that um that sort of switcheroo. And so Zemus it's also not really three three dimensionalized whatsoever. So. Yeah, that's true. He's just like a douche. So All I right. got Zemus. My number twelve I put as uh La Habrea. From Final Fantasy XIV, um, he's he's interesting. Their whole little dragon cult thing is is, is intriguing, but I don't know. I, I just don't really fear the guy. I mean, we've we've come up against him a couple times in the past, and we don't. He just barely serves as a. He's just kind of in the way, you know. And then there's the there. We've got him, and then we've got the guy in the white outfit now, the uh, Asian that's wearing white. Clearly, that guy's better. So. I can't really put La Habrea that high up there. Um, I can't. Plus, we totally just banished him, didn't we? Isn't that what we did in, like a little while ago? We're I like, can't. I can, yeah. Well, in a, an expansion, he yeah. seems dealt with. You know, <laughs> he seems like it's over for him. And it just yeah, and you're right. It was an expansion, but the fourteen fourteen suffers in the a similar fate of eleven, where it's an MMO and the story. Yeah, we got to figure out uh, MMO storytelling. I don't think at least Square hasn't figured it out. I can't say anybody else has because I haven't played like any MMOs. But well, I think I think these are just MMOs. Like it just feels they, they all feel like this to me. Mm. This feels just like every other MMO. Fourteen. Like it's fun. I, I enjoy it, but it's not because of the story necessarily. Now, I mean, we are having a lot of fun in Dragon Song War. But Dragon Song War is markedly better, <laughs> of course. <laughs> than so the other ones was Heavens, or well, maybe not Heavens. I would say Chains of Promethea and Eleven and Wings of the Goddess were also better. Uh, than the mark like than the other expansions, but you you disagree on which ones are better. In 11, I would almost say that some of the eleven ones are better than the OG fourteen by a good amount. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so yeah. we're talking uh, shame here, people. But we're also talking like to three audience members. Yeah, that know <laughs> that know. Uh, but yeah, La Habrea, eh, not, huge. Uh, not huge. My my next one is uh, is um, La Habrea. As okay. well. Uh, and it's because he just kind of pops up every once in a while, and I went, oh, I guess we'll have to find him at some point. He seemed like he was not <laughs> the main bad guy. He seemed like he was going to be one of the big henchmen sort of characters. Right, yeah. It, uh, I just didn't find him that compelling. It's that's I like, like I told you, like the bottom ones are kind of... <laughs> Then the middle ones are kind of like they're they're pretty good, you know. They serve the story, and then the top ones are really great. So I'm excited to get 
to get moving from here. What's your next one? Um, my 11th place, I, I put Vane Solidor. Um, and I almost kind of feel bad for this one. And because I, I don't know, he's an interesting character. He is just really after power. And he's a, I don't know, he's a, he's a well, well characterized character, I guess. Like they give him a good. Uh, could feel to him it's but a i a role i think yeah he's he's very charismatic and he gets a lot of what he wants done so i mean he's got that going for him but 12 to me is like the story isn't the most captivating and vain i don't know they fighting him in the end i think it would have been cooler if we would have fought the gods or something like that but instead we fought him so i, I i'm just not as impressed with him being the being up there with the bad guys. I would almost swap them with one of my other ones, though, with Orphan, but I wrote it down as number 11, so <laughs> we'll keep it there. So you're stuck. All yeah. right, are we at number 10 now? Yeah. My number 10 is the Emperor from Final Fantasy II. Oh, uh, wow. And uh, I did remember the Emperor, and I remembered uh, following him along and um, fighting him quite a bit. And so as opposed to the ones that are lower on my list, like he felt like he was more of a presence, and also, like the boss fights, I thought were uh, were memorable from FF2. So I put uh, not so much for his characterization or anything like that, but because I enjoyed the fights with uh, with the Emperor. Okay, I I think I'm gonna hmm, I think I'm gonna swap it. I'm gonna put number ten as Orphan. I had it as number nine, but okay. yeah, just not not as interested in it. I was more interested in the Bartandalus. Um, debacle but i mean i Which guess is fucking confusing well his when whole you look at it yeah because his whole idea is to like get you to fight which he does but then he fights with you the whole time yeah he doesn't, like try to i don't know orphan was an awesome what fight the fuck? what the fuck is that <laughs> yeah i don't know man jesus i don't know orphan is why a is great... it the wikipedia page of of uh, bartanalus just like giant question marks like <laughs> Yeah, like a Riddler. What the fuck, the fuck is he Riddler? doing? I no, don't but get it. <laughs> I, it's just not. It just wasn't as. I wasn't as invested in the final boss. Like it, it has everything that a Final Fantasy final boss needs. Like they all do, but some of them are just more interesting than others. An orphan, it's not, not that. And then, as I said, I put Necron and Kuja at number nine. Mm. Um, Necron, I think, does thematically work with the game, but he was a last-second boss switch. Kuja, I I don't know. I just don't find Kuja that great either, personally. it's he, He's a tough fight, but I don't know. I, there were other things about nine that I liked more than his. My number nine is X-Death. Oh, okay. And I do like X-Death as a bad guy, although she um, isn't very three-dimensional nope but does some serious brutal damage along along the path so i put uh, x death as as number nine in the starting to get some decent bad guy okay. lists <laughs> um from ff5 of course if you're not sure uh what's your number eight my number eight is x death that's where i put okay there you go awesome fight um the just the visuals from five and from six, honestly, in those final final moments of the game are like incredible. They look yeah, they awesome, are. and it's huge, and it's everything you want to Final Fantasy. She is replaced by the Tree of Death. Yes, yeah, and it's sweet, so. like <laughs> I, I boss switch, right? That's another boss switch in the <laughs> yeah. uh, in the series. Yeah, uh, but I I loved it. I, I thought it was a great fight, and it was something that. I don't know. It, it, it was weird going into the end zone and just like fighting your way up there. Like all of it was just really cool, and it felt um, it, it felt pretty powerful and did a lot of damage. Caleb, you have eight of them, right? Yeah. Okay. What do you have for your number eight? <laughs> Garland. <Adam>. Garland <laughs> from FF One. Yeah. Okay. It's the lowest on there. It's a piece of shit. Is, right. Wait, a piece of shit in what way? He just the story doesn't make any sense because of his fucking time traveling bullshit. Well, uh, I'm gonna go time travel, stop you from killing me in the future. And don't you now, think now I have him obviously higher because I haven't talked about him yet. Don't you think that he is a somewhat interesting bad guy though? Like the series started out with like a bad guy who had some quirks and would like sing songs and shit, and then had this like crazy immortality plot thing. 
I would say that it, it, it took a few <laughs> games before we matched a bad guy that was like Garland. In a way, yes, but at the same time, any time there is a boss who messes with time, just fucks everything. It's All fucking right. bullshit, All and right. it doesn't make them a great bad guy. Did you already give your number? Because of the poor plot they yeah. provide. Um, not yet. Okay, what do you got? My number eight is Ultimacia. Oh, okay. Which is the best version of the character behind the scenes being the puppet master. Um, bad guy switch thing at the end. Uh, and mostly I say that because the castle and the boss fight are sweet. Um and also, she is kind of clued upon a lot earlier than like a Zemus um, from FF4, at least from yeah. what I remember. Yeah. So I, I rank her a lot higher, and I I think the boss fight with her and the the um the summon are really great. So yeah, with Graver. I don't know. Some of it's just like a visual cool thing. I don't <laughs> think she's uh she's pretty fantastic, but I wish she was more of a presence in in FF8 than she was. Um, what's yours? Oh, Twice. mine. Uh, mine. I already gave my number eight. Oh, sorry. What was it again? Um, it was X Death. X Death. Okay. Seven though. I've got Zeomus or Zeromus. Oh, um, why is he so high? Uh, just because just it was a low. it was a brutal fight and it was pretty memorable. I mean, I that was the the game that we had the review the next day and I like well, I, was, I came over to you, <laughs> you guys' place that morning like an hour before yeah and I was like alright I'm gonna beat this tonight I get there and I just get fucking nuked just wasted just destroyed nothing in my way I couldn't stop shit and then I spent some time leveling up grabbing the final weapons and I don't know I, I just think it was a great final boss it was the final boss in the series that actually kicked my shit and the first three not so much I never lost to the first Final Fantasy's boss. I don't think I lost to the second Final Fantasy's boss. I did lose to the third one, but it was because, and then I was able to load it up because of you my asshole. save file thing. <laughs> my, uh, you fucking asshole! The save state deliciousness God. of Kindle. You think I cheated in another game? <laughs> Fuck you, man! Yeah. I didn't cheat. That was cheating. That was straight up like fucking. Let's uh, let's do the. Uh, what did they used to do in the Xbox 360 days where they had the Ethernet cable and they like. Oh, they put a light and then put it plugged no, it back in. I've seen people like clip in a light switch to turn on and off, and so to make the other people glitch, so oh, that they could yeah. kill them in Halo. Yeah, you yeah. can do that by unplugging and plugging it back yeah, in well, real quickly. I saw someone like make a switch for it. Oh, that that's douchey. that's fucking. He pulled out. He had FF3 on his Kindle thing, and then all he had to do was like close out of the window fast enough so that he could reboot that that part. It was bullshit. That's exactly why I Nude got it. Nude Clan's going to be a sleep cast, huh, Schweiss? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't get tired. I don't know if you heard the thing that was Caleb opening a can of Guinness. Delicious yeah. beer. This episode not brought to you by Guinness, by the way. But Caleb Craig on the show today. <laughs> There okay. was no joke there. You got to try it <laughs> Doesn't out a matter. Hard. Okay. The joke was what's the Guinness your, sponsor. What's your number seven? He's already falling asleep. Uh, Ultimacia is okay. my seven. All right. And she had a little bit more purpose to me than Garland, but at the same time, she doesn't it's make another... any more sense than Garland does. It, that's what I mean. Like time, it's like calm pressure. Yeah, yeah the calm pressure. Everything about eight pisses me off. We will compress time like, for the you. The fucking the time bullshit again is why they're at the bottom. All right, all you right. Must come. They're basically in the same position. <laughs> all right, Craig. What do you have for six? We'll let you go first. I got. Uh, I got X-Death. my seven, man. I haven't talked. About oh shit! Seven. Sorry. Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> What's your seven? Vane Solidor, man. All right. Oh, I actually man. like. Uh, I didn't like the story of Twelve the first time I played the game, but the second time I played the game for the podcast, I actually thought it was a lot stronger. Not that it's super strong, but I thought it was a lot stronger than it was before. The last half is great. And Vane yeah. Solidor is the first of the good bad guys, in my opinion, uh, because Vane Solidor is uh, a much more three dimensional character. You can see why he sought out the the power that kind of consumes him. And um, his relationship with his brother, and he's a presence the whole time. And all my favorite scenes in FF12 have to do with him or the judges. And it's, uh, I think it's, I think he's actually a pretty decent bad guy. Okay. Personally, um, not that the 
good guy story, I guess the protagonist, uh, main character sort of thing. Um, I actually talked about on Godzilla podcast. I went through the uh, because we had three hours to talk over this movie that right. we watched last week. It was a three hour movie, <laughs> which is not fun to do a commentary over f- for that. Um, I did the the main character slash protagonist thing, and uh, protagonist is the person who makes the story go forward. They're the ones who push it forward, and then the main character is who you see the story through. Either way, it should have been Bosch. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Ash could have been the main character. Ash could have been. She seemed like she's going to be at the very beginning of the game, but then she drops out the face of the Yeah, she's well. like centralized, but then. But the like, strongest, yeah. I think, narrative in the whole game comes from Would Bosch. Be Bosch. Um, and yeah. we talked about this thoroughly on the FF12 review. We did. If you Check remember. It out. I do remember. Um, but, uh, and Vane Solidor is, uh, would be a much stronger bad guy if that was kind of the, the focus. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. yeah. So I, I still thought Vane Salvador as a character is very strong, though. I liked him. Well, I, you know, I respect how good of a bad guy he is. Excuse me. <laughs> What's your next? Mine or oh, Schweiss? Yeah, yeah. well, yours, because you already said it. Oh, X-Death is X-Death. my six. Yeah. Okay. Explain. Pretty much just because of his difficulty, he's uh, he's higher up there, but he also has, like... <laughs> very little story elements uh, outside of killing fucking Galoof, the coolest character mm-hmm. in 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's Kills why he's Galoof. up there. Anyway. Um, what's yours? Yeah, uh, This is number 7? Six. Or 6? Six? 6. Okay, 6, I put Ultimacia. Um, yeah, she's decent. I mean, the, the fight was epic, and... Uh, I don't know. I just I just thought she was a decent bad guy. I think it's cool that we went into her castle, we stormed it, we killed all the dudes. The setup for the final area was really awesome where you had to earn your abilities back. I actually thought that was a, a cool way to do it. Um I thought her fight was huge. I mean you, you fight the you fight her and then you fight Griever and then the scenes with the all the uh, sorceresses through time, like all of that shit was way cool. So I, I don't know. She was at least an interesting bad guy and her theme is one of the better songs from the series. So, I don't know. She has a presence. And it was, I, th- I think she's a decent bad guy. Craig does not agree. I can see with his little smirks. <laughs> it did the time compression bullshit. <laughs> like, the, anyone who messes with time is immediately a bad, bad guy. Oh, we have that. That is just the way it is. They're, the story elements that they provide are, so just, Hermione? are just poor. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I did not like the fucking time travel oh, shit. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Fine. Fine. Uh, my number six is Chaos slash Garland from FF1. <laughs> and he is high up there. And I think it's because he, although the games didn't really follow his lead until FF6, um, I thought he, as a bad guy with presence, with a sense of humor, with a personality, despite it being like this really rudimentary, as we see it now, FF like NES game, he actually is pretty memorable and interesting as a character. And because of like his importance on the series, and casting like bad guys are super important in this series. Um, that I think uh, I think I have to put him as number six. I think he's. I think. Uh, Do you feel that way because nobody else in Final Fantasy One has a personality? He's literally the only he, one who is somewhat he three-dimensional. Does, he does leave his mark on that game. I'll give you that. There's there's someone missing an eye. There's an elf missing an eye. I remember that. <laughs> wow. Rally, rally ho. Right? Rally ho or rally ho, depending on the version you have. Isn't that the dwarves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are the dwarves. Yeah. said elf. I know, but I no, was no, the elf it's like two different things. The elf wants its eye, Matoya. Oh yeah, yeah, they're looking for her eye. Yeah, Matoya's got the. <laughs> they bring that back in fourteen too. Matoya's cave, it's pretty cool. Yeah, game's a giant, uh, giant reference. It is. It's, it's, uh, it's all reference. Even when it references eleven, it's like. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's like fuck it. Yeah, here's eleven. It referenced eleven. Yeah, dude. Yeah, oh yeah. There's all a, the time. Yeah. Actually, eleven is. Big in fourteen. 
Yeah, sometimes they'll have like little campaigns where you can go. Eight, not so much. I haven't seen that much FF eight sort of shit. In True, 14. Diablos is the most eight thing we've seen. Yeah, Diablos is the only eight thing that I can remember. Of course, one of our <laughs> listeners will know more, but like when you go through dungeons, you'll or trials, it'll usually have a flair that's like similar to one of the games in the series. So it'll have creatures from that game or things that look like those creatures. Mm. And then the area will kind of be reminiscent of that similar area in right. that game. Like we've gone through uh, dungeons that look like FF12. We did la- Last time we played, there was one like FF11. Um, I haven't seen one that looks like FF8. Maybe there's like a lunatic Pandora sort of thing in the future. I'm sure there is. That would be a great level sort of thing to do in the future. But We're like everything has better stat boosts than you. Depending on your level? No, no. What I'm saying is like the visual, <laughs> the visual look of it's the, the only way Pandora. to capture eight, Joe. Stuff anyway, and the Esther sh- soldiers will be there as well. The only way to truly capture it is if it like the dungeon just had like 30 boss fights. Like you don't actually walk anywhere; you just boss fight the whole time. Yeah. That's the way. That's that's how you do an eight boom, dungeon. Boom, 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 boom. Oh God, I do hate that music. Oh man, I hate that music. And so many people are like, oh, soundtrack of FF8 is amazing. I'm like, some of it really is amazing. Like three songs. But God, I hate that fucking, the Balam Garden theme and the map theme. The are, Balam Garden theme. And the theme. Esther theme. The most, the most upfront music <laughs> in the game. The ones you have to listen to the most. Sorry, I saw, I saw a thing in Twitch that said FF8's amazing. I'm like, hmm. It's not. There are things I think 14 should reference it more, but that's not a... Uh, yeah. I had to listen to other music while playing that game for the most part this last time around. Yeah. Because after five times the, of playing it... The Balam Garden <laughs> theme is okay for like two seconds, but because you hear it ding, for so long ding. and so often, ding, 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 it becomes ding. just grating. <laughs> yes. yes, it does. Yeah. What are you your wa- thoughts? It makes twice. you want to play Russian. <laughs> um, I don't think eight soundtrack is that bad. Those Dude. songs aren't great, but. Dude, like you hear those two songs like the most. You do, and yeah. On There's only the like three good songs. And that is not one of them. <laughs> the instrumental version is fine. I would say it's a good song. Oh. Instrumentally. The instrumental portion of Eyes on Me, it's, it's fine. Okay. It's okay when it's like a piano I, piece. Even then, deep I don't in really the background care for of the hotel dude. lobby. Yeah, yeah. Elevator music. I guess, yeah, it's just fine. And maybe it's like great in comparison to the actual song with the lyrics because that's uh. awful. So it's like looking at a little pellet of shit versus a giant <laughs> pile of shit. Jurassic Park size pile. God. Oh, Eyes on Me is such a bad song. Guys, guys, what? It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. It's such a bad song. I can't even. I can't even think of a song that's except for maybe whack 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 whack. That song might grate more than <laughs> no, dude. Than eyes on me. There are. Just go look at. Uh, oh man, what is that chick's name? Nicki Minaj. Just go. Oh. Go listen to her top ten oh, on ho. Spotify. Oh, stupid ho. Stupid ho is. N- Honestly, though, my stomach churns more at Eyes on Me than Stupid Ho. Stupid Ho is just like, oh, fuck, this is stupid. Really? I can't, dude. I can't it's do stupid. that. It is stupid. I She's can't stupid do that ho. song. I hate it so <laughs> fucking much, dude. <laughs> so I would say there are many songs worse than Eyes on Me, but Eyes on Me is the worst song from the entire series. Yes. Should we rank our worst pieces of music in the series? This we should, episode? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the to worst. piss off people. The worst, yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what would be on the bottom, so and or the, the top, auction, the auction house. Uh, that theme one would from be FF5. what would be on the bottom six. For you? Uh, it would be that one. It would. I it would, would say be eyes, eyes on, me. on me as well. And then probably. Uh, I can't think of a worse song. Uh, Real emotion. I'm trying to decide, from like if if that one or the. What can I do for you? That one, the fucking drop. The, the water droplet, droplet yeah, the uh, water Esther droplet. Theme. I hate the Esther <laughs> theme, dude. I hate it. Of course, it. they're both from FF8. So goddamn much, dude. I can't, I can't decide which one is FF8's worse. FF8's soundtrack, so 
such big highs and such big lows. Yeah, craterous lows. It's, yeah. uh, SR really bugged me, dude. I was really pissy in that area. I was like, <laughs> I don't know where to go, and I have to listen to this. Yeah, it's because it's a fucking work, like work, maze, work, and you work, have to spend work, so much fucking work, time in work. there. Yeah, not good. <laughs> Jesus. Where were we? <laughs> I don't remember. Number um, six for me was Chaos, Sash Garland. What was it for you guys? X Death. X Death. Mine was Ultimacia. Ultimate. Okay. So we're on five. Number five, okay. Top five Final Fantasy oh, villains. Man. Kuja, for me, is number five. I think he's a very strong presence in the game, although his man thong really, really makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I thought that his connection with um, with Zidane was really interesting. I thought he was a really well uh, fleshed out three dimensional character. I do wish there wasn't a bad guy switch at the end, but I do think he's a very decent bad guy. And he was a really tough uh, fight. In fact, he was tougher for me this time around than Necron was after. What about you, Craig? I put Zeromus. Zeromus is number five. Yep. He's in your top five. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he's only got eight, so. So why is Zeromus better than X Death, Ultimacy, or Garland? Well, but even though there's the bad guy switch, he's still controlling, like, Golbez for the entire time. So basically. Every evil thing that you see Golbez do is basically Zeromus just doing it. So it's like, I mean, he's still a, an okay bad guy. And then, like, I, I did play the, the version of 4 that adds more story. So maybe, like, that has something to do with I it. I know there's, like, an added flashback. Yeah, in, there's, in like, added one, flashbacks and Which we stuff. did not get yeah. in our version. You yeah. got in the full 3D remake, which people yeah. think don't exist. And for some odd reason, we didn't have to play that one, but have to play the seven full 3D remake with voice acting. I don't, I don't understand. Anyway, yeah, go ahead, but, choice. <laughs> uh, my number five is Garland from Final Fantasy One. Mm, um, I think okay. he's extremely memorable. I think the series started out on a much higher note. <laughs> I think than Craig it would is be. very wrong. In other words, yeah. it no, would be a, fucking time it, travel shit, man. Caleb, compared to Final Fantasy Two, Final Fantasy Three, boss. No, it's he's way better. It was a high point for the series, and it was the first game they had released. <laughs> it peaked for a while, as far as bad they, guys. Uh, they had, uh, I don't know, he's he's just very interesting. He's the only character that's interesting from that game, I will admit. That is true. And that might play a part in it, but I I enjoyed his, his presence. I thought he was a decent character. Um, I don't like the time plot, but it's a million times better than the Broken 8 time plot, so Dude, I don't really it's care. It's just as broken. It is literally just as broken. No, There's no time. No one can actually do a fucking time travel you story. You don't know that, Caleb. Oh, I wait. do know that. Oh, time travel story. I thought you were saying time travel. No, nobody <laughs> can do a time travel story. It's fucking bullshit. If someone could do time travel, we would Because they always, they always <laughs> end up leaving fucking bullshit paradoxes that make no goddamn sense. You should play Final Fantasy XIII too, Caleb. No, dude can't do it hey look you fix change, paradoxes if in there. you change the future you can change the past yeah change that's the, the most doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> well, <no. laughs> well Caleb, if it's, you change look, the no, future you're dude, just literally I'm changing just the present you, if you can change the future you can change the past okay you don't have to think about it that much well, just, uh, just uh, if you think past. about time as not a beginning middle and end kind of thing if it's like a any other any other um any other that's not how it works, though. No, you don't. Know. That's how. That's only how we know it works. Have dun, you never dun, dun. watched Inter or not Interstellar? No, Interstellar. Twice. I love Twice. Interstellar. Time doesn't Fuck exist. You guys. <laughs> Have you? No, that's that. That's what that movie explores. It explores time as a dimension, just like uh, just like every other dimension we have. No, where it is can be manipulated. Have you read it Einstein's isn't. theory of relativity? I have not. Okay, no, I couldn't get through it either, so it's fine. <laughs> so time, the, you never know, Caleb. We might it might just be our perception of time. Nope, Garland number not. five. Garland number five. It's not Garland terrible. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what else we got here? <laughs> number four. I got Sin slash Jet slash Yu Yevin. Okay. I don't really see Yu Yevin as like this ultimate bad guy guy because he's not really present in the game. On top of that. He's just kind of a flea that you got to kick out at the end of FF10 to be like, let's stop the cycle. And he's literally, literally every part of that boss. Mm, you've never beaten the game, mm, so. No. I've seen you guys beat it, and I know the story. And I just have to beat it myself to like sin. be able to shit on it. Jet is Sin, and then I think Sin 
as a presence in FF10 is really powerful and really violent. And the connection with Titus's father, I thought, was really interesting. And so. You mean the character that doesn't need to be at the game? And I, he's a kaiju. No, he does need to be in the game. He's no, a, he does. He's no, a brilliant storytelling mechanic, Caleb. No, he is. No, That's why Final really Fantasy is. X is the third best Final Fantasy nope. game. Nope. It's, it's not good. Caleb, they it's, created it's a terrible. character who was new to the world to help us, Second who were also Final new game. to the world, explore that world. Yeah. Rather than just being, oh, yeah, you don't know that this thing does this? No, we don't. It, oh, it you mean you mean it's okay to C. have like a uh, freaking? I'm a foul C. What? And then at the first time you play the FF13, you're like, "What the fuck is a foul C?" So you're just, so <laughs> it's just okay to have characters that are basically hypocritical Amish jocks as like a thing, because that's Amish. what Waka is. Or, or yeah, he's just. What, what does Waka about? have to do with this? Dude, you said it, Titus. Is a... uh, yeah, I know. I'm just talking about the characters. Like it's fucking. That Amish. Is, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, dude, they're all Amish. They can't have technology. Uh, I guess. I guess to yeah. a certain <laughs> point, but apparently they're allowed to have fucking anti gravity space domes that <laughs> fucking fill with water so they can play three fucking soccer. Look, Caleb. All like, religion. How is that acceptable to sin the thing that hates machines? Caleb, it's the same idea as you can't have coffee or tea, but you can have all the energy drinks you want. There are rules and people follow them very precisely and everything else isn't a no, rule, so you do it. No, dude, it's a clusterfuck and it's garbage. You haven't beaten it and you don't belong here. Yeah, That's exactly why I need to beat it, so I can shit on it properly. I don't think you can. Uh, we're, talking, we're talking main villains, but we are grouping some boss fights in. It's kind of a fucking weird discussion. There's but too many. There's too many different things going on. Um, uh, my number, wait, are we on four? Uh, Let's go, Craig. He did okay. So uh, four. four is Kuja for me. Okay, what well, well, makes Kuja four? He's an okay bad guy. Bad wow, bits. you your okay is in the top five. Everybody else is kind of shit. Almost man. all of Caleb's wow. list is the top wow. five. Yeah, I've though. beaten the shittier games. <laughs> you know, people used to love you on this show. Yeah, and watch them turn. <laughs> Prepare. <laughs> uh, Mine is a good game. It's just. Yeah. My number four is Sin, Jack, Yu, Yevon as well. Um, I I enjoy Sin a lot. I mean, he's a kaiju, so he's uh, interesting at the very least. I mean, Final Fantasy has always wanted to be Star Wars and Godzilla since seven, at least for the Godzilla part. <laughs> um, and I just I liked the uh, I liked the the story going on between. Titus and his father, and I really enjoyed... I like the Yu Yevon stuff. Like, he doesn't have much of a presence, but, I mean, the entire civilization as we know it in this game worships this guy. Almost everybody does. So, like, he has a presence. He is worthy of being worshipped. He creates sin. Like, there's a, he has an entire church to do his bidding. Like, he's, he's a badass. Um, and, of course, Jekt is just the right amount of abusive to his pussy son uh, <laughs> the entire game and I I find him refreshing I do and I hope I hope that as a father that is literally the cry, only thing cry. that I think is okay about I, I I hope as a father I will be half the dad that Jack is, <laughs> is that an announcement Schwein? Yeah, no 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 no, no. <laughs> that's where I do all of my baby announcements is to Ultima say, Final hey, Fantasy my sister's house is for sale for 275 <laughs> Two hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, thousand. Yeah, oh, thousand. Oh, gee. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh sorry, dude. You you bought your house right at the right time, and my sister is selling her house right at the right time. There's a hundred thousand worth of equity in it right now. Oh wow. Yeah. So they're gonna get a much bigger house. That's awesome. After this, I know. <laughs> well, you, you were saying you might be interested in. Just yeah, like, I was like, how much is that thing? Just curious, because I maybe if they it. if they told you only how much they owed on it left, I guess that would probably be a lot better price. <laughs> oh, I I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I like Sin. I like you, Yevon. The whole Sin, you, Yevon, Jekt, um, I don't know, trio. Clusterfuck. Is interesting. And Ten's one of the nope, best games in the series, fuck. and one of the best games of all time. So. Nope. It's uh, garbage. Yeah, I think you're totally wrong, Craig. And nope. uh, go fuck yourself. You said bottom three. nicely. Uh, bottom three. You didn't even have. <laughs> you had to play all of them to have a bottom. The three. ending boss is every man. Okay, what's your number three? Everything past that is just. What's extra. your number three, which is way better than sin? Vain. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead. I. 
Okay, it's, yeah. Vane's a good bad guy. All right. You said it yourself. I did. I yeah. said it, he was the start of the good bad guys. Yeah. I don't think sin is a good bad guy. Sin is just a thing. That's just all it is. And Titus has no purpose in the story. So... There you go. Oh God, you're so wrong. Jesus Christ, Dude, he you're has, so wrong. Dude, it should be a story about Yuna sacrificing herself to fucking save her people. It is, you That's ass. what it should be. <laughs> That's what but it instead, is. instead, no, instead, it's fucking about Titus and his fucking daddy issues no. while he's trying to get some fucking poontang <laughs> off of a naive priestess. That is what fucking Tan is about. No, Tan is about Yuna's journey <laughs> through Titus's eyes. No, yep. It should be through Titus I and through Yuna's eyes the entire I, fucking time. With if it was through hey, you Yuna, know, people we would do say that we agree too much twice. Maybe we should agree. People, the reason why it works, the reason why it works with Titus is because it is a strange land for us and for Titus. So we're all His learning fucking things. Being along. there doesn't make any goddamn sense. That makes twice. it make sense. No, it doesn't. Maybe in the context of the story, it's a little muddled, but I mean... A little muddled? You're trying to make it... You're, you're, the problem you're having is you don't realize that the story is about Yuna's journey. That is what Final Fantasy X That's, is. We're just it should seeing focus it, on it more it through Yuna, the fuck not out of it. through fucking Titus. Well, we see Yuna through Titus. We see Titus it has the bigger role. His fucking dad is the devil. Dude, I mean, come on. No. <laughs> It's he doesn't have the bigger role. He really doesn't. <laughs> Dude, he does. I mean, he totally does. You need to finish the game, man. You really do. All right. Uh, number What's, three. <laughs> number three for Joe. My top three are very difficult. This uh, one's gonna piss me off. They're all gonna like it. mix together. Because they're very close. They're very close, and it could just depend on the day. Just like a cax length away in from each other. Like a pubic hair away from me, like the pu- the thickness that's, that's of a what pubic I said. hair. The cax length away for you. Oh wow, well, thanks, but yeah. Go on. Uh anyway, these top three could it just could depend on the day, but for today, uh and I had to think about it real tough for about a minute and a half. Yeah. Uh a whole minute and yeah. a half. Kafka is number three. I think he's an extremely um, present uh, great bad guy, although a little cartoony, which is why he's at the bottom of my top three for today. Uh, although a little cartoony and his little fruffle neck thing is just a little weird. Uh, he's a clown, man. His ending boss f- uh, point and the point where he destroys, spoiler alert, the world of FF6 in uh, two thirds of the way through the game, um, really, really make a difference in our uh, just really big, big moments for that game, and I think uh, I think he's a good, uh, good antagonist. All right, I <laughs> second that. X Death is my or not X Death? Sorry, <laughs> I was looking at Kafka. <laughs> X Death. X Death has made a return. <laughs> so um, Kefka is a complete fucking asshole. Kefka <laughs> is my number three as well. Um, it does get really tough from here on. As much as I love Ten's boss, Kefka, he does what he wants. He sets out to destroy the world and does it. He deceives everybody along the way. He poisons an entire castle of people. Kills them. Just kills an entire group of people. Completely ruthless. Now doesn't to me doesn't have as much story as say sin um or now more than garland so he's he's got he, he doesn't have as much story as sin i feel like sins uh sin and you yavin are more interesting as characters kefka is just pure evil and that's another thing that the series does a lot that i a lot of people think kefka is the greatest the greatest uh villain in the series right and it's because he does what he sets out to do he right. d- destroys the world uh-huh. Um, and he gets everything he wants. He is pure evil. Now, I think that personally is a is almost a makes him a weaker bad guy in my book because I don't think there is such a thing as pure evil, and that's something that Final Fantasy strangely doesn't really go after as much as they should, considering they are an Eastern culture. Japan being e- in the East, they usually have a good and evil and we see that theme throughout some of the earlier games but Kepka's just evil like there is no good side to him there is no 
rhyme or reason, as far as I, I recall, for him being evil. He just is. He just wants power. And that is, he's a great bad guy, and he has a, the most epic, probably one of the most epic fights of all time in the end. And it's fucking great with the grand piano playing, and it's just fucking huge, right? Big old cock. That's great. Yeah, I remember the big vanny cock part. Yeah, yeah. Who could yeah. forget that thing staring you down <laughs> from across the chasm? Yeah, but great bad guy. Had a guy. similar thing happen the other night. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, great bad guy, but I feel like he easily slips into the third position for me just because he is just evil, and that to me isn't realistic or interesting. It's just it just is so. So yeah. conflicted number three. Conflicted number three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you already did your my number two, two then. Yeah, your number two. I put Arden as number two. Arden from F. Do, do explain. Uh, he was a pretty good bad guy. You know, he did pretty, pretty much. He, he pretty much got what he wanted. I mean, oh, he, he like, did. <laughs> he he uh he like. Just totally destroyed uh, Luna Freya in, in the uh, uh, spoilers for yeah. fifteen. Yeah, if, if you haven't, you haven't <laughs> beat it, spoilers come after the warning or yeah. before the warning. Um, but yeah, like he he does get what he wants, and he also has like human moments where he's kind of like there are parts where he like even hangs out with the people that he like he plans to kill later yeah, on. Yeah, we have photographs. <laughs> yeah, like with he's, he's just like I photo almost brought it in. me sometimes. I almost like, brought I it like, in in the, the end. <laughs> Remember that one time, Arden, when you weren't a dickhole? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. He's, he's a uh, classic. He's a cool bad guy. I really enjoy that he like actually just kind of like spends time hanging out around you. And then later on, it's just like, hey, fuck you guys. Yeah, he's like a sick, twisted <laughs> motherfucker for that. Yeah. All right, Joe, what is your number two? My number two is the great Sephiroth from <laughs> Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I think he's, of course, a fantastically a fantastic bad guy, very three-dimensional. Um, of course, his mark on the series is legendary. Um, and a uh, very distinct and interesting individual with a really cool backstory and uh, a really good ending boss battle as well. So uh, I think it's obvious Sephiroth is way, way high on most people's lists, and it's number two on mine. All right. Respectable, I suppose. Uh, number two for me is Arden as well. Um, great bad guy. He set out to destroy a line of people, and he destroyed that line of people. Quite expertly. And, I mean, the guy who voice acted... The guy who voice acted Arden did a fucking bang-up job. This character was likable. This character was enjoyable. He was extremely three-dimensional. And, yeah, he had the... He almost has the elements of the other top three. He's got a good backstory. He has good motivations. And he's just fucking relentless with it, too. He just slaughters everybody. He fucking annihilates whoever he wants. He takes over the fucking world. Yeah. Goes Kefka mode, makes everything go dark, kills off all sorts of people. Yeah, he murders, like, uh, thousands of people just to kill, like, a couple. Yeah, he fucking... <laughs> he went for it, man. This guy is Kefka to the extreme, in my eyes. And his... His plot line was extremely enjoyable in 15, and I would say probably one of the strongest points of that entire game was Arden's presence in the game. He's uh, yeah, just a, I was extremely impressed with this bad guy, and I, I didn't expect him to be that evil, honestly. Like, I was like, okay, I'm not really sure what's going to go on with 15. Like, I can tell he's iffy because I watched the movie and I watched all the other supplemental things. He's definitely on the bad side, but I didn't quite understand exactly what or how bad he was until he started slaughtering everything, and I woke up as uh, Keanu Reeves 10 years in the future. <laughs> that's <laughs> I, true. And that's, and that's when I knew. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I've been out for 10 years. Oh, my God. God, he <laughs> yeah. does look like modern Keanu Reeves. I know. Keanu Reeves' beard it just needs to go away. It's it does, work. yeah. Sorry, Keanu. I love you, but... <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, you're rid of that weird thin beard. Everybody everybody in 15 has that thin beard <laughs> shit, too. And like, does no one here, like... Is no one here from the north? Like, what is this? From the north. <laughs> yeah, we need, like, some Viking with a god beard to come down. I don't and think start... Ignis had uh, any facial hair. No, yeah, he didn't have any. No, didn't. Yeah. Yeah. 
smooth as the baby's bottom. Yep. My number one. Well, is, I mean, we know who it is. Is after Craig's number one. <laughs> My number one is Sephiroth. All right, explain. Why is he better than all of the other seven? Well, he's pretty close to Arden, but you still he he's an amazing bad guy. He like basically is about to destroy the world before everybody's like, you know what? We're we're gonna have this magical Deus Ex moment, and then uh, <laughs> what about Night Sex moment? And that too. Okay, it was um, at night. <laughs> But he uh, he totally kills uh, Aerith, nice. and like that's a yeah, it's yeah like that's a, a big moment. It's a big moment, like a huge thing, and it's like that, like in fifteen, where Arden, you know, he totally kills Little Freya, like the love interest or a love interest of like the main character. So it's like that is a huge thing for a bad guy to do, and you totally don't get her back. Like there's. <laughs> like people fucking try to glitch the game so that they can keep her in the thing, but like, it, and then just like his backstory with like Genova and how he was manipulated in every way, basically, and he just like, he finds out he just fucking snaps and tries to kill everybody, mm -hmm. and I think that's fucking awesome. My number one. I feel like Schweiss is gonna be really pissed off. My number one is Arden from FF15 for today. Once again, it could depend on the day. But let me uh, let me explain why. First off, I think that as soon as the story gets going in 15, I'm on board. I know some people didn't like Chapter 13, but I thought it was really good, actually. Um, on top of that, when the bad guy got more and more sort of three-dimensional, I got more and more into the story, and the ending fights were just incredible. Um, both visually and it was like a really cool part of the game. Um, on top of that, you, all the things that you guys talked about with Arden, um, it's just super interesting. And you can like even delve kind of like you can with Sephiroth. You can delve into like a bunch of fan theories about things. And of course we looked into like understanding FF15 sort of stuff. And it was just really in depth and really interesting uh, stuff when it comes to like him and then the summons in the game and their relationship and then his relationship <laughs> with the line of the Kings. Oh, I just thought it was, it was way cool. And I think he has all the things that Sephiroth has like the, the interesting backstory, kind of like the dark brooding yeah. character. He's been waiting so long for this moment. Um, as well as all the things that Kefka has where he, is just evil brutal yeah like the uh, poisoning of the the village and, and the, the water. and the darkening of the world and all this yeah. shit i find arden i think he i think they tried to up their bad guy game for 15 and personally i think they succeeded uh i mean it might be tough because some people are like well that sephiroth and kefka they're classics they must be number one <clears throat> and number two but for me if i'm gonna be honest with myself i was looking 10 years from now i think Arden and my experience playing 15 for the first time and I'll, I will play it again um, I think uh, I think for me it was very very strong very very impressionable on me so today I'm ranking Arden as number one <laughs> all right FF villain but it could change at any time people Just be aware all right now the top three aren't really gonna change though they're all gonna be the same <laughs> top three yeah, the top three will be the same characters, but who is where? Admittedly, Arden did kick out someone else in the top three very recently. Though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Who was going to be in the top three? I guess it would probably be. It was Sin for you. It was, yeah, Sin or Kuja, probably, depending on the day, once again. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I put number one as Sephiroth. I mean, the guy has an excellent backstory. I think he has. I think he has as strong, if not a stronger backstory than Arden. I think it actually is stronger because we know more about Sephiroth, and we yeah, can we see do. his, we can see his uh, his plight like firsthand. We see his transformation from being a normal guy who's just working for this company. Yeah, through like flashbacks and then the uh, like with the stuff you find out with Hojo and everything. Yeah, and like in Shinra Manor, like seeing him change his mind, seeing him like n realize what it is that he has to do, uh, super powerful. And he's, he's pretty fucking brutal as well. I mean, he slaughters an entire village of people. He's just, he cuts down anybody that, that's in his way. It's just his objective... 
uh, he's kind of the way he goes about it's a little different like he wants to destroy the world so obviously it's either you do it or you don't but his attempt to destroy the world would have wiped out everything as yeah, opposed to Kefka crush the fucking planet yeah it would have it would have been a catastrophe there would have been it would have been like an ice age for a long time if something that massive were to smash into that planet like it, it would be over and he would harness the power of the life stream and it, all of that shit if he was even able to it would have been a god, right? Yeah. Um, even more so than Kefka was. But obviously the, the party thwarts his efforts and shuts him down. But I mean, the identity crisis that he ran through, I think, is one of the strongest plot points in the entire series. And it's just, I mean, I, I think it I think it edges out uh, Arden basically any day. But it is a tough fight. But I, I just think Sephiroth has a slightly more interesting story. And he's... He's kind of he's like an upped Arden in my mind. He's like a an Arden that's just a little bit cooler, and we have a little bit more backstory that's not not as theory based. Mm. Um, it's like actually given to us, and we can see the way he he just altered himself. Like he was just destroyed by what he found when he looked into his his origins and became obsessed with. Uh, I don't know, his genes almost in like a weird like neo Nazi esque way he just became like <laughs> consumed by what he was. Um it was I don't know, I just think he's great, so um glad we can all agree on the top three at least. <laughs> it's uh it's uh, well except for Craig, I guess. Craig's got Vane. Craig's, <laughs> <laughs> Craig's got number three is Vane. I uh, you know, I, I should have put Vane higher. I was looking at it and I was like, you know, Vane actually is a good bad guy. It's his, and, his goals aren't necessarily to destroy the planet like half the other people in Final Fantasy games. Yeah, he are. just wants to rule, he just, basically. He just wants the fucking uh his empire. Yeah, which is everything. He's the son of an emperor and he feels like he's not gonna get it, so he wants to take he's it. He's little finger. That's yeah, what he is. Basically. <laughs> yeah. That actor is totally in season three of The Wire, and it's weird, by the way. Littlefinger is yes. Oh boy. Yeah, and he he's trying to climb the ladder. Does he and not too? He doesn't talk like that. He yet. doesn't talk like this. Not yet. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> the more powerful he gets, the more he starts like. Yeah, the more he <laughs> really the quieter and softer. Season he speaks. We restarted the series and he's and normal. Season one, and yeah. he's like, he doesn't talk like he like he. There's a tiny bit. There's a hint, but it's not really. Yes, like the more Sansa. Pl- the more plot <laughs> plotty he gets. Like yeah, the more he's got going on upstairs. Like the, the deeper into his plot we go. Yes, it's gonna be sweet. Season seven's gonna rock tomorrow or, or yesterday, as you guys hear this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and yeah. then it's all sand snakes. Oh, dude, That's she's the in plot. the season. I saw her on the fucking, red carpet. Fucking kill that lady so I don't have to see your bad acting anymore. Oh, no, it's the mom. The mom was the one I saw on the red carpet. Uh, the mom. The one who the was, one that was married with to the, Oberyn. Yeah. Yeah. She needs to die as well. Uh, yeah, she's, she does. She's evil. But. Okay, she's the best of the three bad actresses that play the Sand Snakes. No, the Sand Snakes are her daughters. I saw the mom on the red carpet thing. Although I think I saw the main Sand Snake one. Do you not count her as the Sand Snake? No, there's the three daughters, and then there's uh, her. She's uh, she's Uh, not. Is she not part of that? I thought she was like the leader. Maybe we're thinking of two different people. Well, they're her daughters. Like I'm talking about the one who was with, uh, with um, what's his name? When he got his teeth smashed in or his face smashed in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laria or whatever. Yeah, she's not a Sand Snake. Those are her daughters. Well, I know they were her daughters. She's not the one who poisoned. No, she is. But she's totally a sand snake. But that no, the nickname goes to the daughters of those two. It, she's one of the people that we hate I in the show. I can't fucking I cannot fucking stand a scene with those <laughs> yeah. with those people. It's it's not because they're particularly bad story things. It's that they are bad actresses. Yeah, they are. And, and it's like, like you got a group of bad actresses doing at this least phony the, At least the one is hot. The, yeah, the, the one. one that one is so smoking <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> let's let's be clear she is smoking hot she is a terrible actor yeah <laughs> but she's hot enough that it makes up for some no it doesn't i it doesn't it does. make up for any I of the bad i think it acting. makes her better than the other two <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Jesus. <laughs> I will not. What? She is the best Who's of the, the bad. Most beautiful Dude, girl this is why you shouldn't world. be a director. You'd let your penis do the thinking <laughs> and the casting. <laughs> Oh, come on. I'd just be Nick Cage, be other people. It'd be face off for every. Uh, uh, it'd be like Nutty Professor. Every movie would be face off. <laughs> yeah, up. Nutty Professor. There it'd you be go. Nutty Professor, but yeah. all Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I would watch that, to be honest. I get 11 <laughs> times the paycheck because it's 11 different roles. Yeah. Oh, also, I funded it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Passion Should of the Christ on this and drive 3D crazy or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. Good discussion on bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what, guys, it's so it's so easy to bash on fifteen right now because of things that it could have been. I think it's better for all of us to just appreciate the game that we got. Yeah. Uh, as fans of just playing video games, I don't think you should judge fifteen against like what it could have been with versus thirteen. I think fifteen, frankly, is a very strong game, but. Whatever. Maybe. I think it's maybe middle. I'm the only one who has positivity in this. I thing. think it's middle ground as far as the series goes. That's why it's exactly in the middle. It's the eighth best Final Fantasy game. And bad guys too good, and the and the combat's too good for me to place it in the middle. Yeah. Uh, bad guys really good. Combat is okay. Combat's fun. It's fun. I don't know. If that's I know. all I give a shit it's, about. It's not amazing though. Yeah, it's kind of Kingdom Hearts, and it's yeah. not bad. Well, but Kingdom Hearts. I would say a little better. A little better? Yeah, dude. I, I loved 15. I enjoyed 15. I'm not going to fucking... I well, I mean, it's, I loved it. it's funny it's that just, you bring I that up. I know that a, it has problems. It's funny you bring that up at a time like this where the average rating for Arden is the 1.33 spot. <laughs> so, or like 1.6. is the, He's almost the best villain in the series. Um, so, yeah. Mm, Great well. game. It's worth it. I uh, Get, put it a hundred hours I in, and it. shelf it for the rest of. I loved it. I shed a single tear at the end of the, at the end of the game, and only FF10 has done that for me as well. So, I uh, I I say that I think 15 is very powerful. I'm, I don't. I think it does have some flaws, like we talked about in the five hour review of 15 that we did. Uh, but uh, I think I think it's a little far to shit on it, like like people shat on 13. And it seems like things are twisted that way. Where they're going to start. Are gonna, yeah, be like, it could have been versus 13. It's like, I well, think, 13 could have also been a complete well, game, Well, I too. think they did that to <laughs> Well, I think the, the most of the hate towards like The storytelling is, like, is e- like um, inc- maybe I'm in the minority here. Way better than the last game everybody shit on, which was 13. It was better. It's better than 13. Okay. Yeah. But they're both not but great, but they're not great for very different reasons. 15s is not great storytelling wise because it's got barely anything. And yeah, 13s it's is got, not great because it, it feels is packed, incomplete. Because it is stuffed to the gills with shit that I don't fucking care about. Yeah. It's oh, like, and then the expansions like bring characters back, but not really. But not really. Because I still don't think, I don't buy that hope was God the whole time thing. I think he was hope until he was God in the end. And then, oh, and then they bring back he that. Ho- it wasn't God the whole time. That's what I thought you were saying. Like, he no, was God the whole time. he was time. God the whole time in Lightning Return. No, I still don't think that's the case. Yeah, he was. I don't think so. Totally was. He it's, took... in the, it's in the fucking wiki. No, I looked it up. He takes his image, but he's not him during the game. He, like, morphed him into a young version of Hope. It's That is why I hate it's it. It's like the Trinity, dude. He it's is fucking... God still. <laughs> No, dude, no. Yes. And, and and they and they bring that general guy back, the uh the Sid whatever, Sid Reigns. You remember that in Lightning Returns? You remember that? How they's like, "Oh, I'm not actually Sid. I just chose his image." That is why 13 has bad storytelling. Is because he just chose his image randomly. He did a character creation screen and it happened to show Sid <laughs> Reigns' exact look for another person. That is why that one's bad. 15's storytelling I don't like as much because it's just it feels empty. I think it has problems at the beginning of but 15, it, and that's where you get all the hunts, which we all shat on. Um, but it simpler is better than way overly complex. Yeah. But I would say they're bad for... I thought, uh, look, the whole point of a story is to pull you through emotionally, not to get you in depth in lore. Yeah, balls uh, deep like, in like lore. Like fourteen seems to think that a good 15. story equals shitload of lore, but fifteen was simple and had like simple characters that you you pulled into, and 
then that was the story. It was the relationship of those characters. Yeah, it had a it had a good bit of like emotional stuff with it. Yeah. And like that's the, the only reason but, to be in invested but in the story still, is emotions. It still feels like there could have been more to it. Well, like, I know there could have been. The most powerful thing in the game is when you go to the world of darkness. That should be an epic part like it felt I like agree. i was when i got no, there yeah, i was like right, oh right. my god that's dude. A, that's a missing scene I and then they, that. Yeah. Yeah, they you just get all the backstory from a truck ride with some fucking kid that you <laughs> that you that like let that betrayed uh, your your thing and got jared killed a man who you somehow care more about than your dad's best fucking friend and your friend's dad your best friend's dad who died they all cried about that Jared motherfucker dying, but nothing about his dad. No. Now, daddy can fuck off, but Jared, we got to get our jewels right. We got to get our rings. He went to Jared, but you can't go to Jared anymore because <laughs> the fucking empire killed him. That, that is what bothers me. The, well, the, the darkness. The, ah, and then they, yeah. and they put out this survey where they're like, what, what do you want to see from 15? And that's in there. And I'm like, fuck you. You know it should be there. You fucking know it. Yep. I think there could have been more with the uh, Noctis and Luna Freya too. Yeah, like, that too. A lot of their stuff was yep. like weird transpondence via teleporting dog. I mean, they have technology of phones, so they could have just been texting. I'm gonna repeat <laughs> myself and say that those two are the biggest flaws in the game: is the Luna Freya relationship and the uh, lack of completion with the World of Darkness uh, yeah. section. Um, I played it for an hour and I. But I loved it. everything else in it, so fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I do like, hope they. I don't know. Do you? Do like you I, I rank ten story really high, and there's shit in there that does not make any sense. Oh, there is in the lore. So, I, and you think about it when you're playing the game. Yeah. Um, and but then again, like in FF6, like the I, look, I I know a lot of people love Ultros. I think he's kind of stupid. I hate Ultros. And he just I shows up every so like much. none of these games are flawless. Yeah, but um, tactics. Is. I think I think FF fifteen <laughs> has fuck you. I, well, I'm not sure yet. I'll find out. But I think uh, I think fifteen is is much stronger than a lot of people get credit for. Or like, I have a feeling a fifteen first time playthrough people loved it. Second time playthrough after all the information, including we did this on our show of like, oh, it was actually they were gonna put all this shit in. Um, I think it's now become hindsight is let shit on this game. It's pulling an avatar on this. Well, well they're avatar. also letting them do it because they're like, "Hey, what do you want us to add into the game?" Yeah, story no, wise? I agree. I agree that that is avatar. so. It's like they're basically begging you to fucking shit on them because they're like, "Yeah, we realize we didn't get everything done." Look, man, Avatar was a three star film when it came out, and it's still a three star film now. <clears throat> yep, it's very impressive yeah. to look at, but it's Pocahontas. <laughs> And I don't like Pocahontas. It's one of the worst Disney movies. So why would I want it again? I think it's a better movie than Pocahontas. Oh, it is a better movie than Pocahontas. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's the same story. And I don't know. It is at least a very beautiful movie to look at. So like that's what I like about it. I don't go. I don't watch Avatar because I'm like, oh, I don't need a deep story here. I want I, a deep story today. But maybe uh, it is. Maybe it is. But 13, didn't it take a little while before the internet started to really hate 13? No, it didn't take that long at all. It took like a, like two months. Oh, okay. And then people started shitting on it. And I would say the same for 15. I think it took about two months, <laughs> some extra information, and then a lot of people started shitting on it. And of course, now Square Enix, instead of leaving 15 alone, they just came at it. They just like, let's acknowledge that we left things out. And I do that with my hand quotes, by the way, left things out um, and put a bunch of shit in there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I like it or if I dislike the fact that I they're doing that. I will find out. I think I think after we're done with this show, Schweiss, I think I'm going to take a couple weeks off, and I think we're going to plow through the series in two weeks. Really, the main series once again, dude. We should do that as again. a we should do that as like a Twitch marathon. Yeah, we should. Totally I was do. actually thinking that. I was thinking that because we brought it up a couple weeks ago. You were talking about, it, and I was like, that would be a cool send off. Gonna go easy mode on everything though, and. Uh, do some cheaps. Maybe, maybe <laughs> do a uh, competition where we, where we just like, we get together at a certain time and we start streaming and see who can get furthest. Yeah, maybe. Are you gonna play fun. those Final Fantasy games? But you know how long we away. have till that fucking happens, Schweiss? A long time. A long fucking time. Jesus Christ. The longer we're on this podcast, the longer it'll be. <laughs> 
but uh yeah no it's it's yeah the 15 was good though i, I liked it speaking it, it, of um let's just go straight to questions from us to thou that's what yeah. we call it right to thou yeah us to thou that's close enough but uh you gotta give me like a second here jesus jesus So many questions. All right, so a few weeks ago, Joseph asked, What topics do we need to cover on UFF? We're getting pretty deep into the series now. What have we skipped over that needs attention? Rob Bes- Lennon. Besides some novels from FF7. Yeah, we tend to radio play and novel the rest of history of Square Enix. Yeah, we we know of what we are. Those are series. <laughs> like, I think that, so. The history the of uh, oh, some FF limited commentaries. Oh, some. Yeah, um, it's not that many left. I think we got halfway or more than that, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then the review for that. That'll be fun. Rob Lennon it sucks. <laughs> it does. Uh, will you be adding the Saga series games to your list? They did start out as Final Fantasy Legend. It should fit your criteria as games that were FF, Rob. Now, I bought this game, but I bought it because I thought it was the game that Joe was talking about when he said, he was said one of the, he either said, this is one or this is not one. And I looked at it and I was like, fuck it. It is not one. And the reason why it is not one is because they added Final Fantasy Legend to the title only in the States to sell it. Doesn't count. So it was not originally Final Fantasy in Japan. It does not count as a Final Fantasy on our playlist. This is a imposter Final Fantasy game called Final Fantasy Legend. Um, and so it will not be a part of our show. All right. Yeah. There we go. Uh, he says he's been lied to all this time. <laughs> Are you really <laughs> looking forward to that? Really? Well, it's on the fucking list. It, like at the, very, at the very bottom of our list on our main page. You scroll all the way down. It says, if it was not titled Final Fantasy originally in Japan, it does not count. Yep. Um, and sorry. I'm sorry. And we have we have discussed this before on this show, but admittedly, it is a lot of episodes to remember. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it does not count. All right. So Harry Gooseballs says, how about mm. a top 10 list? Best, coolest weapon designs, best songs from the game you have played. Could even do worst characters, moments, even overrated moments. Also, lore stuff is always interesting. Yeah, we've got plenty of uh, lore that we can dive into. I don't say we got plenty of lore because we just had a lore episode um, recently with the fan theory thing. Um, we do have Shinru's going to bring it up. Uh, there was the idea that Shinru had about the FF13 lore. Yeah. Um, which should be discussed. Yeah, I agree. That is a. It a, should, yeah. It's, it's heavy, it's thick. And we should probably do it before we forget. The 13 games. Yes, we should. <laughs> uh, Silver Shades. I don't have any specific ideas, but I can tell you some of the things that I have found most interesting that you have done so far that maybe you could make into full episodes. I really like when you get into the mythology of the series. I also enjoy when you guys get more philosophical and when you are more critical um, with your analysis of characters and storylines. I think Joe's film studies background provide an e- interesting insight into character and world development that not many fan sites get into. I would be interested in maybe a couple episodes where you analyze specific characters and their arcs. Maybe even skip people like Cloud, Lightning, and Squall, who always get a lot of focus and instead focus on popular, but lesser analyzed characters like Terra, Barrett, Oren, etc. You could maybe even do a poll to see who people are most interested in hearing about. You could do even call the series Character Spotlights. That is an interesting idea. I also really like the fan theories episodes, but I don't really know of any specifically that you haven't already covered. That is unfortunately true. An episode on blue mages slash blue magic throughout the games would be cool. How many times have we been asked that? Have we been asked this before? Blue magic? Yeah. I feel like it, yeah. Could you talk about blue magic? It's like, uh, not really, because I never used it. I did a little bit. You did a little bit? I was interested in collecting a lot of the things. I I could not fill a whole episode, though, on that. I could not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe we can go through all the jobs in the entire series, but maybe yeah. I, I don't like Blue Mage. I just, I just didn't use. I, I and like we talked about. You didn't use Quistus? No, not really. No, I totally did. 
I like love the only fire good rockets e- out like, of her tits. The only good blue magic is in seven with the seven uh, enemy enemy uh, skill. Ability. Yeah, the yeah. enemy skill material. I would say that I would say that Kamari is pretty powerful for a little while in ten. Not very for a long. little while. Mm, Kamari was enough. the least. I used never character even too. every time I play I attempt same, to play ten, I yes. never use that guy. You can get some pretty powerful attacks from him, but it's one of those things where you have to be just playing around in the game not yeah. trying to beat it in order for blue mage to be rewarding yeah and in 11 it's extremely rewarding from what we saw <laughs> thanks to one of our wonderful listeners um yeah many maybe highlight some of the reoccurring classic blue magics and also highlight some of the most bizarre blue magic spells in the series even talk about what we might see or hope to see with blue magic in future ff installments Shinra says, oh, and answer the should we do an episode every other week instead of weekly question on the show. Don't do that. That's what FF Union does. Ooh, that's fucking harsh. Well, we might have a Dragon Quest. I mean, ooh. We? What we? Uh, I'm just saying, you know, maybe every other week there could be a Dragon Quest podcast, and maybe every other week there could be a a Final Fantasy podcast. I don't know. I don't know. Something in there. Someone yeah, told me. That, know. Someone told me there was a Dragon Quest podcast in the works. Maybe I'm insane. Maybe yeah. Oh, never mind. Somebody I, told never you mind. that. I must have just. That, I must have been dreaming. Hmm. Yeah. He says even if you guys just randomly talk about FF stuff to fill an episode, I still find it fun to listen to. I don't think you phoned it in or on any episode. And besides, there's a clear distinction between quality podcasts on iTunes that release every week and ones that do it every other week i know joe once mentioned making money off podcasts and if that's the case it's best to be a weekly show instead of bi-weekly <laughs> daily daily show <laughs> uh, a daily final fantasy podcast Alistair says the backstory on the astrals from 15 literally everything in 15 that wasn't in the main story so everything so uh yeah okay um we totally did that on 15 already didn't we with the shit that was missing we talked about. Yeah, I think we mentioned that. Okay, uh, I think we went into that already. Uh, okay, there's some good ideas in here. Um, I don't really want it to become a top 10 marathon podcast too much. Uh, but, you know, we'll we'll look into some stuff. There's some series we need to finish up. There's some spotlights we probably need yeah, to do Yeah, and now. who knows? Maybe once we get out of 14, we might be able to pick up the pace on some of these games. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So it wouldn't need to be an issue if we didn't take four months to beat a game. <laughs> yeah. If we could take a few weeks or a month. Hey, you know, beat Stormblood or, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Heaven's Word 2.55 Dragon Song. Uh, <laughs> Delray Pete in the chat tomorrow. says change uh, Patreon to 25 cents a week. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the Patreons good. per month. Come on. Yeah. Uh, all right. These are good ideas, guys. Um, it's not something that I'd be worried about anytime soon, necessarily, but we do figure we have a few more years of Ultima Final Fantasy to go based on where we are now versus where we need to be before we <laughs> before we sign off guys. for the last time. Guys, we thought this podcast would take two years at the beginning and it is turning <laughs> into something else. A long ass time. Yeah, which I mean, it is. We will have accomplished something very few people will have done. I mean, completing yes. every Final Fantasy game. Yeah. That's a that's a feat. That is a feat right there. So uh, I mean, it's worth it. Well, but at the moment we're at foot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so I mean, it's we'll, we'll have to see what happens, but we will try to cover everything of importance at the very least, and yeah, pick up the pace on the games. I mean, we in the beginning we were a lot faster. I mean, the games were shorter. Uh, and, yeah, they were. <laughs> they were, and we but, also started in the middle of a summer break. Yes, and that was a great summer. Oh, some yeah. good times. It's good shit. Yeah, fucking first four games in like two months. Can't do that anymore. To be fair. If we had not done 11 or 14, we would be way further oh. into this thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the three actual weeks of my life gone to 11. Yes, those could have been... Can't that, wait to do those Winhurst missions to finish this fucker off. Yeah. <laughs> Winhurst has a beautiful soundtrack, so I am actually excited for that. Yeah, it's nice. I'm creating a new character for that, though. You do what you want, but... Uh, I think <laughs> if we do decide to plow through at the end... I think we have to make a new character. 
We know exactly where to go, man. We we could do it. Yeah. We, you mean we know exactly how to use the FF11 Wikipedia? That, yes. yes. <laughs> we, we know how to navigate the We wonders. know how to use the wiki. Yeah. And we know where to go to level for the first, like, good chunk of the game, I would say. Like, there's a path you take. You just walk. Yeah, it's called already using your character that you already have and then <laughs> yeah. starting up that Winhurst quest. Or, you know, we, we could do Or Winhurst. Sandoria. <laughs> we could do Winhurst as a new class, and that would be kind of the same thing. And that way, if we felt like it at the end, like, eh, I want to beat this guy face in in one hit. Like, we just go through, oh, dude, no. That would be pretty fun to go through and like just do all the dungeons again and like get all the records because our guys are way OP and it's just like Degolier or it's El Husk and New Boreas hold the record for blah blah blah. And it's like it's just fucking El Husk and New Boreas all across the board because <laughs> we're the last people that have played the game like ever. <laughs> we'll keep it alive just for us. Problem is, 14 will take just as long though. Oh, I don't think oh! you, you can't start. You can't just start. Oh, no, you can get the potions to level up, so you don't have to level up. Oh. You do still have to, like, get equipment and shit, though. Like, yeah, dude, 14 would be fucked. I don't know if we could do 14. Oh, we'd have to. You know we'd have to. Uh, from the beginning, I, bet, oh, I would buy one of those fucking potions that's for sale, though. I absolutely would, just to well, be, like, if we're gonna do that, fucked then... to leveling. <sighs> Because I don't think you can just restart a Realm Reborn with your character that you have. No, you'd have to make a new character. Stupid. Well, we could still run through the entire story, but I don't, that would not be fun. I would, would just not. I would just run through a Realm Reborn. That would not be fun at all. And all those just, cut scenes? Just a Realm Reborn, not a Realm Reborn 2.55. Right. Right. That would be a lot shorter than we think it is. It would be, yeah. And you don't have to level. Just remember that. You buy a fucking potion. That's what I would do, man. If you're gonna speed run fourteen. All right. If we if we do that, then we then we would have to start a new character in eleven. Or we just skip the MMOs and replace it with like tactics and whatever the second best non main series FF ends up being. Dirge yeah. of Cerberus. <laughs> <laughs> we do the best no, we do the best non uh non God damn uh, it, dude. non main series and the worst non main series, and then we call it good. And then we sign off. Fucking dirge. You beat it in one sitting, like almost every almost every I minute did, of that game. I did. I did beat it in one sitting. Yeah, eight hour stream. I was there for most Thanks of it. Thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah. Okay, so because we're totally gonna beat Dragon Song War by next week, and we didn't get your opinions on Heaven's Word, I would like for the question for us to you this week to be: What did you think of Heaven's Word slash Dragon Song War as a whole? Uh, so if you could please go on our forums, ultimafinalfantasy.com, uh, click on the forums, join there, or if, uh, you already have an account, which hopefully you do, please answer that question if you've played, uh, Heaven's Word slash, uh, Dragon Song War, which if you're confused is the second half of Dragon, or of Heaven's Word. So that's, unless you got another question from us to you, that's my question from us to you this week. No, man, that's, which, uh, uh which of the final bosses would you fuck? <laughs> That's the question kill for Mary, us to Kill you. Mary Fuck for... For all the Final Fantasy bosses. Kill Mary Fuck for Sephiroth, Kefka, and uh, Arden. Arden. Okay. Kill Mary Fuck, <laughs> Sephiroth, Kefka, uh, Arden. And fuck Craig's number top three. Hey, man. I, I got to do what I got to do. You got to do what you got to do, I guess. Uh, UltimaFinalFantasy.com is where you can find the show. Uh, there's links there for Amazon, Patreon, PayPal, uh, if you want to support us. Uh, on top of that, you can tweet me at Joseph Agulier. Me at Obsidian Bob. Me at UFF Podcast. Uh, you can find the show streaming live at twitch.tv slash Ultima Final Fantasy and enjoy talking with the uh, trolls. Yeah, enjoy it. It's well. been a lot of fun. Yeah, tons of fun. We you also have a YouTube channel. Some of our shit's there. Some of it's not. Uh, you can go to it's youtube.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Check out our phone line, 385-204-3921. Leave us an intro. Leave us a question. Do whatever Please the do. fuck you want. And um, leave us an iTunes review. We didn't have one this week. but No, look. we did. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, shit. We just didn't read it. Okay. We'll read it next time. Yeah. You're, you're safe this week because <laughs> we went long. We did. Uh, speaking of long, my cock is on the show today. Yeah. Yeah? Dragging against the mic right there. That's pretty... Uh, brought it up. Yeah. I almost, I almost missed it. I'm glad you pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Needed a magnifying glass. All right. We'll For your you. ear... Check out uh, check out Nude Clan Godzilla. You know, you what know to the do. drill, yeah. yeah. See you guys.
guys next week. Fuck this fly! Enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show was produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show. And look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. stop the recording <laughs> all right guys thanks for hanging out with us on the twitch we're going to be streaming nude clan here in a little bit continuing our dungeons and dragons playthrough so stay tuned for that should be around three o'clock we'll see you guys then oh enjoy 12